You may be familiar with the traditional method of finding quartiles of a data set, and that is to repeatedly cross off data values from either ends until you reach the, the middle or the center. In my opinion, there is a much faster way, and that is to use this general formula. Q stands for quartile equals one half outside of N plus one th term. That th bit is very important. This formula does not give you the value of your quartile, it simply gives you the location of the term in your data set that is the quartile. So if the number came out to be 11, your quartile would be your 11th term. So let's have a look at finding the median or our Q2. So Q2 equals one half outside of N plus one th term. N in this case, when we're finding our Q2, N stands for the number of data values in your whole set. So let's count how many data values we have for this example. 4 plus 6, 10, 3 is 13, plus 1 is 14, plus another 5, we have 19 data values for this example. So if we just substitute in 19 for N, Q2 equals 1 half outside of 19 plus 1 term. That simplifies 19 plus 1 is 20 times a half is 10. Tenth term. So our median or Q2 is located at our tenth data value. So let's count. We always count in ascending order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here is our Q2 or our median. Now remember to read off a stem and leaf plot, you look at your key, so 3 line 5 means 35. So we have 2 line 9, so we have 29 is our median for this example. Let's go ahead and find our upper and lower quartiles, our Q3 and Q1. So Q1 equals 1 half outside of N plus 1 term. Now, when we're talking about our upper and lower quartiles, our Q1 and Q3, N does not represent the number of data values in the whole set anymore. N for Q1 represents the number of data values between your start number and your median. So it's all the number, it's the number of data values between these bounds, so in here. So let's go ahead and count how many we have. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So N for Q1 is going to be equal to 9. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. So 1 half outside of 9 plus 1 term. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 times a half is 5. So Q1 is going to be at our fifth uh, term. Let's count in ascending order. One, two, three, four, five. Here is our Q1. So that's going to equal 22. Our Q1 for this example is 22. Let's find Q3 now. So Q3 equals one half outside of n plus one th term. So because we're dealing with Q3, n is not the number of data values in your whole set. n for Q3 is going to be the number of data values between your median and your last number. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values. So n for Q3 is going to be 9. Can you see that this number exact is exactly the same amount of numbers we had in Q1? The reason for that is because our median, the definition of a median is that it divides your data set in half. So there's going to be an equal number of data values before your median as there are after your median. So let's substitute in n equals 9. So Q3 equals 1 half outside of 9 plus 1 term. 
So 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 times a half, 5. So Q3 is located at our fifth term, and we start counting after the median. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our Q3 is going to be located right there. And that, if we read off the stem and leaf plot, 53. So 53 is our Q3. Let's do another example. Let's find the quartiles of this new stem and leaf plot. So we always start by finding our median first, or our Q2. So Q2 equals 1 half outside of n plus 1 term. Remember n for when we're talking about Q2. n is the number of data values in our whole set. So if we count up all the data values in this example, n will be 24. So let's substitute in 24. So Q2 equals 1 half outside of 24 plus 1 term. 24 plus 1 equals 25. 25 times a half will give you 12.5 term. So we need to count 12.5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 0.5. So we are somewhere, we're halfway between these two numbers. So reading off the stem and leaf plot, we need to take the average of those two numbers. So we have 31 plus 35 over 2. That equals 33. So our Q2, or our median, is 33. Let's find our Q1 now. So Q1 equals 1 half outside of n plus 1 term. So remember, when we're dealing with Q1, our n is the number of data values before our median. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So n for Q1 equals 12. So let's, if we substitute that in, 1 half outside of 12 plus 1, 12 plus 1 is 13, 13 times a half is 6.5 term. So we need to count 6.5 terms from the start, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we are here. So we need to take the average of 22 and 24. So 22 plus 24 over 2, that equals 23. So Q1 for this example is 23. Q3 now. So Q3 equals 1 half outside of n plus 1 term. n is the number of data values after your median. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, n will be the same for your Q1 and Q3. So n equals 12. We substitute that in, 1 half outside of 12 plus 1 term. 12 plus 1, 13, 13 times a half we said was 6.5. So we need to count 6.5 terms after the median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0.5. So we halfway in between there. So though we need to take the average, well, 49 plus 49 over 2, it's just 49. So our Q3 equals 49.